gives the percentage composition of solute A in the solute mixture. So let's say that the area under curve for solute A is the blue color, area under curve for solute B is red, area under curve for solute C is green and area under curve for solute D is black. Let's take this as an example. So uh, let me, I, I, by mistake I colored outside the area. We cannot do that. We have to calculate inside the area. So we know this and now we have to calculate the percentage composition of A. So it will be area A over area B plus area C plus area B plus area A. So the area of A over the sum of all the areas multiplied by 100 and this will give me the percentage composition of A. So you know, now know how to calculate percentage composition. Um, so don't worry about the shape of the curves because you you might be thinking that uh, okay these are like very smooth curves how will I calculate the area without using something like integration. So actually these in your in our A levels they will always be triangles and uh, we know how to calculate the area under curve for triangles so it will be, going to be half into base into height the area of a triangle. So it's very easy you uh, using this formula you will be able to calculate all these areas. So now let's move forward. Uh, let's do an exercise now that we have done everything. Let's do an exercise on chromatography on the different types of chromatography. So the first question, a mixture of three compounds was analyzed by paper chromatography using a non-polar solvent. The resulting chromatogram is shown. Okay, so very important thing that I need to highlight first is that non-polar solvent, very important very 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 important because this means that uh, if my solvent is non-polar my stationary phase is, is polar so the solvent which is the mobile phase MP is non-polar the stationary phase which is SP is polar so we know that the mobile phase which is the solvent is non-polar and the stationary phase uh, is polar. So identify which compound is responsible for each spot. So we are given three compounds in this table and we have to put the numbers over here of that which spot corresponds to which compound. So first let's see 1, 2 and 3. 3 travels the least distance so it is the most polar because it has dissolved the most in the stationary phase so it will be sorry it will be most polar then one will be the least polar because and or the most non-polar because it has traveled the furthest in the mobile phase uh, it has dissolved the most in the mobile phase so it is the most non-polar because like dissolves like so we know that one is the most polar and uh, sorry one is the most non-polar and three is the most polar so now we have a benzoic acid, we have uh, the, a benzene, benzene ring attached to CH2OH and we have a benzene ring attached to two carboxylic acid groups. So if you haven't done, uh, if you haven't watched my video on or my playlist on benzene on, and its compounds then I suggest you to watch that first uh, in order to understand what these compounds are. Uh, so let's move forward now. So. Uh, you can, so you can see that all three of these will have hydrogen bonding because all, all of them have the OH group. But in the case of uh, this, uh, in, in the case of this molecule, we have two OH. We have four oxygen atoms in total. Let's just not look at the OH groups because all of them have it. We have four oxygen atoms, and you know that oxygen is highly, highly, highly polar. So <coughs> since we have, I'm sorry about that. Since we have four oxygen atoms over here this means that this compound is the most polar and since this compound is the most polar we will assign three over here because 
three is the most polar then if you look at two if you look at 